do you want to improve your game? Chances are you like my videos because of the intelligent approach to breaking down film. Well, Point Guard College has camps all around the country that teach you how to think the game. Their nationally acclaimed Point Guard College, Playmaker College, and PGC Skills Academy camps are for dedicated junior high, high school, and college players, as well as coaches who want to improve their knowledge and communication skills. They host over 100 camps in 30 states for over 10,000 players and 1,000 coaches, and if you're close enough, make the trip. Click on the link in the description below to find a camp nearest you, and you will be on your way to changing the way you see and play the game. You win? Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. This was a game for the ages. While it was a grudge match, grit and grind all the way, these two teams lurched toward the finish line like two exhausted boxers heading to the 10th round. So let's get to it! We pick it up with another 5 minutes to go and the Grizzlies seemingly on their way to victory with an 8 point lead and the ball. A simple spread pick and roll up top forces the switch of Aldridge onto Conley. The ISO is a great idea and it worked. They got Tony Parker rotating to help off his man in the corner. A simple hook pass gets them an open shot, but Kawhi Leonard is no mortal as he snatches this thing with one claw. In a game this physical, it's a good idea to get out in the break for some freedom. Bertans can't handle the pass and watch James Ennis. For the slightest of seconds, he stands straight up and loses sight of Kawhi. That's all the Spurs need to go bang bang for the catch and shoot three. The Grizzlies run a high post split with Carter, Green and Gasol at the elbow. The curl is well defended and Carter gets his chicken wing out just a little too much. Offensive foul. After Coach Fizdale's Game 3 rant, the refs seem to even out the calls, but this one seemed problematic at best. You have to watch very closely as to when he gathers the ball with both hands. While the dribble was discontinued before he takes this left step, by the time he actually contacts the ball with both hands, he then only takes two steps. Then he establishes his left foot as a pivot foot on the rebound, but picks it up before getting hammered. Travel before the foul, instead free throws. The Grizzlies want to get Zebo good low post position, so they have him ball screen and roll hard. Great defense by Bertans and also fantastic effort to wrestle with him down low to prevent the pass. On the reversal, Kawhi just cold rips Ennis, gets by Conley and Euros his way to an incredible and one. They get Gasol in the high post, nice job by Aldridge to push him out above the three point line. This was high low action to get Zebo the ball but great defense by Lee ultimately forces the bad pass. It's a tie game, Kawhi has already scored 8 straight points, and his simple spread pick and roll gets him not even a sliver of daylight for this wild 3 that swishes clean through the net. At first glance, I'd say this was a missed call by the refs, but going frame by frame, it was remarkable how Kawhi was able to contest and contort his body to avoid major contact. Also, weird choice for Conley to attempt an off foot double pump layup while taking off from behind the dotted line. Up three, the Spurs are in no hurry and try an inside ball screen on the right wing. Well contained, but it forced Zebo to switch onto the ball. Carter helps one pass away, which is a good decision since they want Parker to shoot the outside shot. However, the other end of that mismatch was Conley on David Lee, who promptly gets the rebound. Here's where things got weird. Well, dish, Parker can't hit, kept alive. Shot clock goes off, it shouldn't have. The ball clearly hit the rim, but the shot clock didn't reset. Everyone is taught in middle school to only stop playing when you hear the whistle. David Lee stops playing, but Mills doesn't, getting a wide open three. Now, in most cases, I'd say the shot is fine, but this was a chance to run the clock down, and they were up by three. I can't see this as anything but a mistake. Tony Parker was also arguing about the horn, doesn't hustle back, and this missed three leads directly to free throws for Conley. The Spurs call Kawhi's number down low on his preferred left block. This feels like a double dribble to me, as he dribbles it once with control, picks it up, then faces up and drives. Fantastic help by Gasol to get there before the lane line, great rotations back to their men, and great defense to ride Parker and contest the layup by Conley. Of course, Kawhi is right there, but can't corral the rebound with a little help from Harrison who rides up his back just a little bit. 
time to attack Parker down low, guarding the bigger Vince Carter, and watch how great this move is. Carter feels his man on his high hip and instantly attacks on the catch to spin to the baseline. Mills is in the wrong position to begin with. He doesn't need to be that close to Troy Daniels in the corner, and that leaves him way behind Zebo, who cuts and gets the layup. So Kawhi is now getting the full Michael Jordan treatment from the Spurs offense, alone on an island up top to isolate on his man one-on-one. -on -one. Check this vicious hezzy that fakes Vince out of his shoes. Troy Daniels does well to recover, but Kawhi never stops moving as he sprints to the corner after the drive and gets a great look from the corner. Carter was there, but you can see that this contest isn't good enough from impairing Kawhi's vision of the rim. After two Gasol free throws, the game is tied and we get another MJ ISO on top. This time Kawhi hits Green with a behind the back move, semi fumble, that gets him to the wing where he can rise up for the go ahead fadeaway. Watch how he swings his right leg up and around to control the in air turn necessary to get this shot off. An important fundamental when righties go to their right. So now we've got the Grizzlies on the verge of being down 3 1 and essentially out of the series. They put Kawhi on Conley to defend him, but Memphis forces the switch by screening with Parker's man. Parker did very well to keep up with Conley, but he's half a foot shorter than Kawhi, and look at this one-footed righty floater he nails to tie of the game. Now you all probably remember the video I did on this floater from earlier this season. I explained why his one-footed righty floater was a terrible shot for him, but hey, he hit this one and that's all that matters. But there was still time for the Spurs to get a good shot off. And that shot was off another Kawhi ISO out top, and this was a good illustration of what I don't like about Kawhi's mechanics. Often, his elbow goes down on the release when it should go up. His release point is so high on this one to get it off that his elbow couldn't go up any higher, but it should then stay where it is. Instead, it comes down. The shot is way too flat and nowhere near the target, which means one thing, overtime. The Grizzlies take their time getting into a called slip screen designed to get his switch and free Mike Conley from the shackles that are Kawhi Leonard. It's completely unclear why Davy Lee would be on the high side of Zebo here. You simply never front the high post, and Mike Conley demonstrates why. But Parker comes right back and demonstrates a move all young players must learn. Watch how he uses his last step to get into the body of Zebo before twisting and fading away and using the backboard on the finish. Perfect. Memphis goes to Horns, and watch how Conley splits the pick and roll. He practically throws the ball out in front of him, then runs after it. Parker must rotate, gray cut by Ennis, and he's hammered. The Spurs wrap Kawhi around an Aldridge screen. Watch how this forces Zebo to step over to the cutter, opening a pass to Aldridge, who promptly does a left foot pivot, one dribble hop pull up in Zebo's face to tie it. Horns again, and the wedge ball screen high. Conley gets a great look when Lee won't step up, but he can't get it to go. Spurs run the old standby zipper fist for Kawhi, well contained by Gasol and Ennis, and great contest of the three by Gasol for the stop. Memphis runs a floppy set to get Conley a wing touch and post entry for Gasol. Great double off the weak side Harrison by Parker, and watch Conley's body position as he starts to shoot. He's leaning way too far forward. I don't think he'd ever make the shot, but the extra contact from Kawhi certainly didn't help. Oh, and Aldridge should absolutely grab this ball when he had the chance. You never know what could happen when letting it just go out of bounds. The Spurs run their own floppy, and Parker misses a wide open Patty Mills, maybe because he's not used to playing alongside him. This lineup Pop had in during much of crunch time played all of six minutes together in the regular season. No matter, Kawhi isos on the wing, gets into the middle, nice shot fake into a fadeaway for space, gets him another two points. Now this, sports fans, was the sequence of the playoffs right here. Inside ball screen gets the mismatch the Grizzlies want, great double team by Patty Mills off of the rookie Harrison. The spacing was not good down low, enabling Parker to hide behind Zebo until he could pop out to intercept this ball. Up to and a surefire layup that could end the game, watch Andrew Michael Harrison, a guy who was playing in the D-League not long ago, calmly sprint down and just erase the shot off the backboard. Also great hustle by Ennis to get down there and grab the ball, and the presence of mind to fire it up court. Now it's a 2 on 1 for the Grizzlies, and Gasol hits the runner with the foul and 1. I mean, just watch this thing a few more times because it's the true essence of not only playoff basketball at its highest level, but of the grit and grind that Memphis hangs its hat on.
The Spurs run UCLA high post offense, where Kawhi cuts off of Aldridge's screen, who then pops out to the top for the pass. Kawhi finds space coming back to the top for yet another ISO on top. Credit Ennis for doing anything and everything he can to hound Kawhi, who had to get real creative just to get this shot off. So here we are, under a minute, Memphis up two, a simple pick and roll again gets a switch and a mismatch for Conley. Remember, in my Conley floater video, I showed that his righty floater off two feet was an elite shot. And he shows us that exact shot, softly off the glass, and a three point lead as the FedEx Forum starts to levitate. In the only moment you can term bad for Kawhi, he commits an unforced turnover after trying to initiate contact for some space. Now, I understand how physical this game was and how much the refs let go, but in this situation, it didn't make too much sense to me that Kawhi would be this aggressive reaching in at half court with only 12 seconds left on the shot clock. The two giveaway free throws put them in a serious hole. However, watch this insane play as Patty Mills trips over a floorboard, somehow gets it to David Lee, now it really looks like this is the backcourt violation, however, Lee's back foot was up off the floor when he touched the ball, so it's possible that's what the refs were thinking when they didn't blow the whistle. But no matter, it goes right into a handoff, Kawhi gets a sliver of daylight and just nails this three in Gasol's face. With no shot clock, the Spurs foul Harrison right away. Now they're down by three, they need to attack relatively quickly to get a good shot and a chance at a rebound, and if not, then another foul to stop the clock. And boy, is this a perfect play. Patty Mills deserves most of the credit, as does Coach Popovich. Watch how he sells that he's going to the weak side corner, all the while Aldridge is trailing into a cross screen for him. Harrison is completely turned around, he's wide open, so Ennis has to jump to the shooter from one pass away, leaving Kawhi wide open for the corner three. And he promptly buries it. Are we having fun yet, sports fans? Because it doesn't stop there. We still have 12 seconds left and the Grizzlies run high post split action and Gasol just takes matters into his own hands, rumbling to the middle for a running, hanging, completely and utterly contested floating shot that somehow, amazingly, finds its way into the hoop. Gasol's game winner tied this series and guarantees us at least two more games of epicness. Make sure to watch Game 5 in San Antonio because I'm sure we'll get even more of the same intense, dramatic, and incredible basketball.